We have seen that if you have a current carrying wire, it creates a magnetic field around itself, with the magnetic field lines being the concentric circles. Now, what happens if you have two parallel current carrying wires next to each other? So let's look at an example. Let's say that I have two currents parallel to each other, I1 and I2. And let's first say that the two currents are carrying current in the same direction. So both of them are pointing up. And let's say that the distance between them is equal to D. Well, the first current will create a magnetic field in the region where there is a second current. And this magnetic field will cause a magnetic force on the second current. The same thing is true for the second current. The second current will create a magnetic field in the region where there is the first current. And this magnetic field will create a force on the first current. So which means that there will be a force of interaction that two, the two currents will interact through this force. So let's find out what is the direction of that force and what's the magnitude of that force. Well, first of all, let's look at the first current and find out what is the direction of the magnetic field created by the first current at the position of the second one. Well, using the right-hand rule, we point the tongue in the direction of the current. Magnetic field is pointing here into the board. So the magnetic field created by the second current by the, by the first current is pointing into the board. So let's label this as B1. What is the magnitude of that magnetic field B1? B1 is equal to mu0 I1, because it's created by the first current, over 2 pi D. That's the distance to the second current. That's the magnitude of that field. This magnetic field, B1, will cause a force on the second current. And we can calculate the magnitude of that force. So the magnitude of the force, F, and we're going to put a subscript here. F, 1 on 2. That is the force that the first current exerts on the second current by means of the magnetic field. So F, 1 on 2. So what is that equal to? That is equal to... I, I2, that's the second current, L, where L is the length of the wire, times B1. Sine of the angle between I2 and B1 is 90 degrees, so sine of 5, the pi over 2 is 1, so we, we don't need to write that. So it's just I2 L B1. So this then is equal to if B1 is this, we can just substitute it here, so we get mu0 over 2 pi I1 I2 L over D. Now let's find what is the direction of that force. Again, using the right-hand rule, current I2 is flowing up, that's the index finger. B is pointing into the board, middle finger, so F is pointing this way. So the magnetic force acting on the second current is pointing this way. So this is F1 on 2. We can use the same procedure and find out what is the force acting on the first current due to the second current? However, we don't need to do that because we can just apply the Newton's third law. The force that the first current exerts on the second current is the same as the force that the second current exerts on the first one, but is opposite in direction. So if it is opposite in direction, it will be pointing this way. So this would be F. 2 on 1. It's opposite in direction and is equal to my in magnitude. So we can say that F 
2 on 1 is equal in magnitude but is opposite in direction. Now sometimes, instead of the actual force, we are interested in the force per unit length. So the force per unit length would then be equal to mu zero over 2 pi i1 and i2 over d. So, the main conclusion here is that when you have two currents flowing in the same direction, they tend to attract each other. Now let's think about what happens when the two currents are flowing in opposite direction. Let's say that the current I1 is flowing up and the current I2 is actually going down. The magnetic field created by I1 is still into the board, just as in the previous example, but now the current I2 is going down. So let's find the force acting on this I2. Using the right hand rule, I2 is pointing down, B is pointing into the board, so F is this way. So F is pointing this way. So this is the force F1 on 2. According to the Newton's third law, the force that the second current exerts on the first one will be opposite in direction and pointing this way. And the magnitudes will be the same. The magnitude will be exactly the same as in the previous example. The only thing that changes is the direction. So, we can now summarize and say that if two currents are flowing in the same direction, they attract each other. If the two currents are flowing in opposite directions, they repel each other. The force of attraction or the repulsion per unit length is exactly the same in each case, as long as the distance is the same. And the magnitude of that force, as you can see, depends on the product of the two currents and the distance. So, if you change the magnitude in one of the currents, the force acting on each current will increase proportionally, even though you keep the current in the second wire unchanged, because the product, because the force depends on the product.